was Virginia Woolf in love with a woman? Was she homosexual? Why this book is called a love letter instead of a novel? Hi, I'm Zita Bano and welcome to my channel. Today I'm going to talk about the most intense and impassioned romance in the history of literature, which caught the fancy of cinematographers and literatis alike. Virginia Woolf and Vita Sackville. Virginia and Vita, both prolific writers of 20th century, both married when they met and began a decade-long romantic relationship. But what does Orlando, this book, has to do with their romance? Simply everything, because the character of Orlando is based on Vita and it was so personal that Virginia Virginia asked the permission of Vita before writing this novel. So the novel begins with Orlando moving about in his estate and mind you, Vita herself was from an aristocratic family and her family owned an estate. Then we see Orlando trying to write something but he never likes what he's writing and same was the case with Vita. Vita always thought that she was intellectually inferior to Virginia Woolf and thought of herself as a substandard writer in comparison with Virginia Woolf. Then we see Orlando meeting a poet and the poet does not give him any attention and this is what happened exactly when Virginia and Vita met for the first time in real life. Virginia being 10 years older was a little distant and aloof and Vita felt unseen by Virginia Woolf and that is the very line that Virginia Woolf write when Orlando approaches the writer and the writer does not give him any attention. But how speak to a man who does not see you? And I am inclined to believe that this poet is the personification of Virginia Woolf herself. Because in the coming chapters when Orlando presents his work to the poet, he is instantly rejected. Just like how Virginia Woolf initially rejected Vita's writing saying all the supple ease of the aristocracy but not the wit of the artist. As the story moves forward, we see Orlando falling in and out of love which shows his fickle nature and in real life, Vita had many lovers and was openly promiscuous. She even eloped with one of her lovers which brought shame to her family. Even that is depicted in this book. Orlando, when he madly falls in love with a woman, that woman betrays him and that's how he becomes a subject of humiliation in the society. He goes into a self-imposed exile and there he becomes a woman. And this very idea of a man turning into woman shows the masculine and the feminine nature of Vita. Vita was a cross-dresser in 20th century. She charmed men and women alike and she had male and female lovers. So this switch in gender is how probably Virginia Woolf justified her character in her head. In my opinion, when Orlando turns into a woman, then we get to see the version of Vita that Virginia wanted her to be. Orlando tries to become more modest and tries to wear more feminine clothes. Orlando as a woman, how she thinks is very much like Virginia Woolf herself. Virginia Woolf was a feminist, she enjoyed fashion and she also enjoyed the life of London. And we see Orlando as a woman doing the very same thing. So I believe Orlando as a woman is equal part Virginia Wolf and what Virginia wanted Vita to be. We see upon coming back as a woman, Orlando now cannot hold any property and that's something that frustrated Vita in real life as well. She had an immense estate but she was not able to hold it and that's how Virginia Wolf puts it. The chief charges against her were that she was dead and therefore cannot hold any property whatsoever, that she was a woman which amounts to much the same thing. And then we see Orlando actually finishing his work and then showing it to the very poet who critiqued him. And now this poet, which I consider a personification of Virginia Woolf, approves of this poetry and says he will get it printed much like Virginia Woolf in real life, who after becoming acquainted to Vita, started enjoying her writing and also printed a lot of her books in her own personal press. In the end, it's fascinating how Virginia Woolf has taken into account everything that Vita was in real life and how she had the certain image of Vita in her own head and she combined both of these characters into one character that is Orlando. She wrote Orlando with so much love and so much passion that you can see it oozing through the words. Orlando Orlando is Virginia Woolf's public confession of love. She cannot see any faults in her Orlando or Rita and she consider her the epitome of perfection. And that's why it's known as the longest and most charming love letter in literature. That's about it. Hope you enjoyed this video. See you next time with another video.